Hello everyone. Uh, this is the uh, my name is Hector and this is the installation video for the project called Technology Driven Active Learning in Human Anatomy Laboratory. We have a short name for it. Uh, it's called Anatomy Lab. We, we call the the application that way. It's a shorter name, shorter name, and easier name. So, in order to develop uh, and work with this project, uh, you will have to have two pieces of software. Uh, both both of them are available, so you won't have to pay for anything or have demo versions and nothing that sort. So the first one is called Xcode. Xcode it's a development environment uh, that is used uh, in Apple in macOS to develop applications for iOS, macOS, and Apple Watch and pretty much all the devices from Apple. Mm, the language we use is Swift, Swift in version 2.3. I recommend, uh, you're going to see it in the other video, I recommend you guys update the code to Swift 3.0 syntax and you will also need to update Xcode to the latest version so you can work in Swift 3.0. So if you, you want to keep working in Swift 2.3, you're going to have to download Xcode 7.3.1. That is the latest, the latest version with the Swift 2.3 toolkit. So, I'm going to explain, uh, let's see, uh, I said you needed two pieces of software. The first one is Xcode. Is Xcode. If you don't have it in, the, in your computer, in your Mac computer, it can be a MacBook and MacBook Air, iMac, and can be even a virtual box machine with, uh, with Mac OS installed. Although I don't recommend it, I recommend you use a um, big iMac, 27 inch, if possible. Uh, or MacBook Pros, because they have like a lot of, like a, the required processing power to work with Xcode and you don't suffer like the lags of memory and stuff. So basically to install Xcode, if you don't have it, you open the App Store here down in the bar with applications and you go in type search Xcode, it's pretty much the first result and you just install it from here you say get and it's gonna download the, the files like 5 gigabyte, gigabytes so depending on your connection it may take a while once it's installed the other piece of software we need is something called CocoaPod CocoaPod is just a, a third party library manager that some developers work to handle the third party, numerous third party libraries except for iOS. And it, it just handles everything for you and you, you don't have to do anything with the libraries and you can start working right away. So basically to install CocoaPods, you open a terminal, a console, and then you type in sudo gem install CocoaPods. So this is going to download a new gem. This is written in Ruby, as you can see. And it's going to download a gem, install it, and it's, that's called CocoaPods. And it's going to give you the pod command. Pod command, and if you see the version, you can try pod dash dash version, and you can see it's one version 1.2.0, beta point one. This is going to handle all the dependencies for you. You you, you won't have the need to download folders, add them to your project, and link them, all that pesky stuff. So you're going to have Xcode and Pods, CocoaPods. So now you're going to have to set up the project. The project, uh, the, it might be given to you by, by your mentor, by your professor. And basically, it's going to give you a folder with this with this structure, I'm going to download here my latest branch, my latest version, so you can see it. So, here. This is the folder, this is the file I just downloaded from GitHub. I'm just going to rename this folder for better readability. So, if, you, if I open the folder, I'm going to see the actual folder called Anatomy Lab that contains all the code for, for the project, the classes, images, assets all the files required in the project that, that the project uses. This file called anatomylab.xcodeproj 
you see the, the actual file that Xcode opens. So this is the project file that Xcode opens. The spot file has to do with the CocoaPods manager. This is just a text file with no extension. And basically what you do here is that you list all the dependencies your project relies on, the ones you decided to use. Dependencies like, I don't know, things like have, have, have been done like million times, like logins and pop-ups and animations and stuff. This is going to use third party libraries because it's going to speed up your work a great deal. This file is very important, bot file dot log. This dot log file, it is a file, a text file that CocoaPods generates and it keeps the list, a list of the versions and checksums of all the pods the project is using. This is, uh, the reason for this is that your team, let's say your, your, your team has four members and ev every member has to work separate and, on, on, on separate features, but they have to use the exact same version of the pods. So when you have to integrate all those code, it doesn't break. It, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't generate uh, conflicts and, and stuff. So that is why this, this pod, this pod file, dot log file, is in, in, this, in, in the folder, in the root of the project. This readme.md file which is a markdown file with the installate with the this uh, this text you see here in, in GitHub. It's just a, a manual, uh, uh, a, a, resu a, a very summarized guide of what I'm explaining in the video, in this video. So feel free to add anything to improve this document so the other developers or future developers have like a great idea here just by reading the file in the github so once you have that folder with that file you're going to have to open a terminal and then you're going to have to go to that folder to the root of that folder meaning the root meaning the the, the folder that contains the pod file this pod file so if you list the files in the directory and list the hidden files, you're gonna see a dot git ignore. Hopefully you, you will know what that means. But if you don't, basically git dot git ignore file tells, uh, it is a list of regular expression, file names, folder names, wildcards, and stuff that says the git command, uh, which files don't be uploaded to GitHub. Uh, that means temporary files, database files, security files, and stuff that you need locally but you don't need publicly that you don't need to share with other developers and basically that's that that's it that is what that file means every project has them uh, every project that uses uh, git of course uh, if you feel there's anything missing feel free to add it and of course uh, update documentation uh, so once you're here you're gonna use the pod command you're gonna use pod install command and I just like to flag this with verbo so I can see the output of everything to see if everything went smooth or if any error happened so once you hit pod install uh, Ruby the command is gonna fetch all the tier party libraries that we def but that that we we set in the path file we, we will use now uh, Few warning. Um, the first time you run this project, uh, the, the first time you got, you run pod install, it's gonna it's gonna take a while because it's it's need, it needs to download a, a huge GitHub repository with all the definitions of third party libraries. There may be hundreds of them, so it's something in the area of four hundred megabytes and so on. So. You have to be patient. Like the first time, you need uh, you need the, the, uh, to install the pods. But once the the pod file, the definition are cached are cached locally, you it won't need to, to do it again. So when you, when when the install process goes smoothly, you're gonna see all the the warning notices in green. And if we list the contents of this folder, you're gonna see two new things. One of them is a new folder called pods that is that is actually a project containing pods the libraries that we're using and another file called anatomy lab.exe workspace this is the file we need to open and workspace is basically 
a space where you where you have several projects and a project can depend on things from the other projects so you're gonna see in action right now so let's see see here XC workspace and this is the file with the pods so if we if we open XC workspace you're gonna see you are going to see this is the general environment of Xcode and you're gonna see here two projects on the left on the menu on the left one is pods this is where that contains all the third party libraries you won't work here actually I think you cannot and if you try to modify the code there you're gonna get a warning because these files are not readable you can write them you cannot write them you just read them and this is their project this is your project Anatomy Lab. So you see here, Anatomy Lab, and this is the folder we see physically here. This is this Anatomy Lab, Anatomy Lab. And so once you enter here, you you're gonna see a similar structure, not the same, because this in Xcode this are logical. Anytime you create a, a group here, it's gonna create a new folder, but logically, if you if you really want to organize your code the way it is right now, you have when you define new groups, you have to tell them this group, you have to tell the folder for the group. So that's where you see some differences there. So once it's open uh, you're gonna see this process uh, pretty much at the when you open a new project for the first time indexing basically indexing what it does what it's doing is that uh, it takes the code from all your classes or your files and it also takes the code of all the parts to load them in memory so the compiler can give you so the that can give you syntax coloring uh, error detection syntax auto completion and all the niceties that comes with a development environment it is a process that takes a few minutes only when you if you've cleaned your every time you clean your project folder will happen but not every time you compile so whenever you add new code it will happen in a matter of seconds so basically uh, once you have it opened for the first time, you can run it. You can let's say let's take an iPad 2. I recommend an iPad 2 if you have a laptop because the iPad uh, the resolution is too high, and if you select an iPad Pro or something, it's gonna take up a, lot, a whole lot of your screen. So that's why I also recommend an iMac because it's gonna gonna be a lot easier to work in a huge screen. So if we take Anatomy Lab and we select iPad 2, and we just click Run. It's going to start building or, uh, all of the third-party libraries, the ones here in pods, because obviously those are the first dependencies of our project, the ones we're using. And once all of those are compiled, uh, the compiler then will come to our code, the, uh, because our code is the one using the libraries. And once it's finished, uh, compiling phase it's gonna launch automatically this simulator you don't have to do anything the simulator is gonna pop up on your screen with the first uh, with, with the, the screen defining your code that it should appear I recommend uh, in order to speed up the process and avoid the, the lagging of your computer to use a physical iPad and also that way you can really test in a real device like the position of your elements, the constraints of your views and the interaction with the gestures and stuff and basically the simulator is a more limited version of a real iPad so that's why I recommend using a, a real iPad and it's, a lot, it's, it's also funnier because you actually you feel where you're developing so that's a plus. It only takes time when you're first when you compile for the first time because nothing is compiled and then it has, it has to compile everything. 
Then when you start adding code of your own, because you're going to work here in Anatomy Lab alone, uh, the pod the pods code is already compiled, so it doesn't have to be compiled again. So this is going to take all the new code and remove the delete code and just compile the new. So it won't take that long for the second time when you start working. So when it runs, it's going to pop up the device automatically so now you have it on screen you can start working you can start, start testing so on and that's it should work if you need to stop the simulator you hit, just hit the stop button no need to close this close the simulator so you Xcode won't have to open it again the pod file I mentioned, you can see it here in this project. In the pods project, this file you can modify because you can remove uh, you can remove pods. You can add pods. Actually, when you this is the place where you're going to add your your the the two party libraries you you will use and to remove them. You can this anytime you add or remove, you have to go and pod install again. Okay. So that's it. Uh, I hope this video uh, you can by means of this video you can set up the project and start working. If you have any trouble, don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, my my contact information is in the documents. Please don't hesitate to do that if you have any doubt regarding code or project setup or anything. Okay? Thank you for your attention.